During the Crusaders v. Waratahs game there were so many echoes of last year's second Vladislav test in Dunedin, particularly some costly misses off the tee from Foley. However, the most remarkable link was the performance of Curly Beal, in defense and attack. Under the roof in New Zealand's South he put a memorable shot on Sonny Bill Williams, in Christchurch he repeated the act on the Crusaders' Tim Bateman. With the ball in hand he was the Waratahs conductor, swinging the ball left and right and constantly looking for gaps. It was probably the finest performance by an Australian player this year. He has set the bar for others to follow. Point three. Sansar's young officials bedeviled by inconsistency. There is a valid argument that says crucifying young officials is ultimately bad for the game because it pushes them out, so we will not contribute to the social media pylon. But it is fair to say that SANZAAR has a young group of officials who perhaps lack an old head or two. In Christchurch, plenty was missed apart from Moody's strike, for which he was cited. Sakop KEPU twice went around the neck, head without a yellow card. He is no stranger to that area. And then Michael Wells ended up on his neck, head in a tackle in the last second and no penalty was found. Down in Dunedin, the Highlanders got away with a clear forward pass in the build-up to an important try against the Lions. It is a frenetic sport, difficult to officiate, but perhaps the frustration here is that TMOs appear keen to intervene one weekend and asleep the next. As the coaches say, it's the lack of consistency that hurts. Cited, Joe Moody's raised for Armand Curdley Beal has earned a charge. Photo, Fox Sports screen grab Reese Hodge changed the game against the Brumbies on Saturday night when he slipped into the playmaker role for Jack DeBrezeni. Suddenly, the visitors had a running threat with the ball in hand and a robust presence on the other side of the ball. He showed his bravery by pouncing on a line-out overthrow and then challenged the line with his direct running, eventually opening up the space for Jack Maddox's nice try. There should be no reluctance to shift him into number 10 because of a lack of options at number 12 and number 13. Billy Meeks and Tom English can do the job there, and although he is far from the finished article, he can push this side forward. Loading all the talk will be of the Waratahs blowing their lead, but the Brumbies' loss in Canberra was almost in bad. For an hour and there was only one team in the game. But the Brumbies' inability to punish sides when they have them on the rack has been the story of their season so far. The game should have been over at halftime, with the Brumbies the beneficiary of a yellow card to Aminaki Mafi that bordered on harsh. It may be harsh to apportion blame in a team game but Joe Powell and Fari Nui Hawira are struggling this year. In particular, the young halfback does not seem to be the same running threat as last year. Perhaps teams are shutting down that corridor but in the pivot position the Brumbies look like a team in more need of a certain Reds number 10 than the Rebels.1. Follow Lacioni, Brumbies, 2. Narangi, Rebels, 3. Sam Talakai, Rebels, 4. Rory Arnold, Brumbies, 5. Adam Coleman, Rebels, 6. Angus Cottrell, Rebels, 7. Tom Cusick, Brumbies, 8. Aminaki Maffey, Rebels, 9. Michael Ruru, Rebels, 10. Reese Hodge, Rebels, 11. Takele Nehorivoro, Waratahs, 12. Curdley Beal, Waratahs, 13. Tom English, Rebels, 14. Filippo Daunu, Reds, 15. Israel Folau, Waratahs.